Remember when I took over at the TARS initially, they were getting hate mail, you know, from members and I'd ring a couple of them just to say, yeah, I'm a new coach, this is what, so I don't expect you to, to you know, come and buy a new membership. Or I'm not trying to sell anything, I just want to tell you what you're going to see next year. This is it, you've got my number, if I don't deliver, ring me back and give me a gob for it. I had a great experience, you know, in the good times and in the difficult times, you know, uh, and, and, you had, and we had those ups and downs all the way through. From the times, you, you know, the relationships you have with people, even built just around the World Cup of 15, and the amount of Aussies that were there in the UK um, and their experience of that event and how much it, they enjoyed it. The different relationships you have with Aussies overseas to Aussies here, I think my connection with club Rugby and my club rugby roots here were always good for me around relating with the fans. And you know, you're always going to have some people who aren't happy with performances, and you know, they think you're, uh, you know, you're no good, or you know, well, that that happens. You know, it's it's the it's the nature of, of who it is. There's people who will always, you know, not have that taste for you regardless. You know, but then there's lots and lots of people who do. You know, even you know, when I've been doing some stuff with Argentina in, in the rugby championships over 20 and 21, you know, the amount of people who've come up to me, you know, in games and thank, thank me and, you know, which I find so rewarding. It's really nice, you know what I mean, that people will take the time to, to do that. They don't have to. And then that's been my rugby experience and when I started playing rugby, you know, after school. It's always been that, that way. There's been your ups and downs and times where it's been, hard but you know I'm a, I'm a type of person that once you cross the line to go on the field it's war and then when you go off the field you know you're just back to who you are as the type of person you are and I suppose a lot of people don't get to see that and uh, on the screen or um, from the coach's box they don't get to see those things and that's the way it is you know I, I, I like that so because I'm brought up in that club in club rugby environment that I've got a good grounding and fans like the fact that I, I love the game and want the game to be better here no matter what, whether it's a club level, kids level, or, or at the elite level. I'm a very much a truth type of person, you know, so I'm never gonna, <clears throat> I'm never going to polish the truth you know, or the, or, or the situation to sort of make it the truth to keep a relationship going. I'm always going to be honest and that will rub up a lot of people. That will rub some people up the wrong way and that will rub people, some people up the right way. As long as you always try and show respect, even if you're, <clears throat> the truth is not what some of those people might want to hear. You know, whether it's media or administrators, I wouldn't say it's the same with fans. I think fans, uh, you treat them differently because they're your people. They're the people who are there supporting your team and you try to look after them all the time. I remember when I took over at the TARS initially, they were getting hate mail, you know, from members and uh, which I, I couldn't believe. So I remember my family wasn't there early on and I asked the, the, the lady in charge of the memberships to give me some of the worst ones, you know, I think maybe 20 or 30 of them with the phone numbers of those um, members. And every day on the way home from training, I'd ring a couple of them, you know, just to say, yeah, I'm a new coach, this is what, so I don't expect you to, to, you know, come and buy a new membership, or I'm not trying to sell anything, I just want to tell you what you're going to see next year. This is it, you've got my number, if I don't deliver, ring me back and give me a gob for, you know. So, and funny enough, a lot of them did keep my number, and sometimes they sent me texts about what we should be doing, but, the, you know, in the week leading up to the final, a lot of them contacted me, you know, to say thanks or congratulations. And I think that type of honesty and reaching out to fans and telling the truth, even though sometimes people may not like it, is always a way to keep, good, keep relationships for the long term. They won't always be, you know, everyone holding hands singing we are the world, you know, but uh, they'll be real and they'll be, that they're ones that you can go back to. You know, I know I've had some nasty ones with truth telling, let's say with player agents, okay, and it's got sour, but then I've always been able to go back and build that relationship and have that relationship because it's based on the truth. It's not based on trying to manipulate someone, lie. Probably the only people who can't often get over it are media, you know, they, they don't like it if you 
you know, tell them that way, but that's, that's just the way it is, you know. Don't, don't think you should, perhaps it's naive, but I don't think you should change who you are or the personality, your personality just to appease someone. The first year I coached the Wallabies, in fact, right up to the World Cup, I actually coached New South Wales as well. So I had a I'd sort of double job for a year, which in retrospect was actually quite handy. You know, you, you're handling a good part of the team on a day-to-day -day basis. So a lot of the players had that or a solid connection. You are probably going to play a similar type of game style or something like that, so they were already there. Yes, I did take many of the staff. It was a mix. I wanted a mix. I wanted some, a mix of some people who would know how I operate and a mix of some fresh ideas and some new people to come in. If you're not getting fresh energy and fresh ideas and being challenged um, all the time about how you uh, either prepare or play the game or uh, how we're we doing this off field, what could we possibly be doing better. If that, that's the only way to provoke new ideas in your own head. Otherwise, you know, because of the rhythm and the routine you've got to operate in, the, sometimes you can get caught in that rhythm. So you always need um, people coming in. I remember uh, Trent Robinson came on one tour for a few weeks with us. I've had discussions with different AFL coaches and different people who have been involved from different sports. You know, so different ideas of people coming in and being able to help us develop a new system or a better system or improvements on the system that we've got already to get the team to a higher level.